what is actually meditation the word me according to oxford dictionary contemplation remembrance or pondering over a thought or an idea in the east they have a word for this meditation dhyana they call it dhyana but the word dhyana is not exactly translated by the word meditation word dhyana has got some more dimensions there's got some more things to be understood let me give the meaning of dhyana around the world there are thousands and thousands of mystics masters lived on this earth around the world thousands and thousands of groups spiritual groups esoteric groups mystic groups religions people who preach their ideology everybody has got different opinions on different subjects different matters Jesus, Buddha, Mahavir, Christ, Mahavir, Krishna. There are thousands and thousands of masters who have got thousands of views on various subjects. But on one subject, on one thing, everybody, almost all the masters, they agree on one ground. Everybody says, man is not using his total potentiality. man is not as he thinks to be you are not using your total potentiality you are not exploring all your dimensions as far as this one concept on idea concern as far as this one idea everybody almost all the masters all the mystics all the saints seers they agree directly or in other words they agree that you have not explored you have not used all your potential you have much 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 more than what you think you have you are something much more than what you think you are dhyan means the method are the technique to explore what you are and what is not yet known to you to explore the potentiality to explore the other dimensions of your being the techniques which can help you to explore all your dimensions the methods which can open yourself to yourself is what we call it as dhyan dhyan does not mean only contemplating on some idea dhyan has got three parts one is shravan shravan means listening listening these great truths next is manan contemplating or allowing these truths to work on you it is not even contemplating because contemplating again becomes a mental process in which you need to put your effort but dhyan doesn't need your effort if the concept is understood rightly if the truth is understood rightly you cherish it by yourself you don't need to cherish it if the food is really tasty you enjoy it by yourself it's not that you need to put your effort to cherish it you need to put your effort to digest same way if the truth is properly expressed and understood you contemplate upon itself by yourself you don't need to contemplate if you see a movie if it is impressed you if you really like that movie it's not that you necessarily sit you need to sit and contemplate on that movie there is no need whatever you may be doing you will be continuously contemplating on that movie 
your mind will be with that movie. The same way, when the truth is understood in a proper way, when it is presented in a beautiful way, you just continuously cherish, your mind enjoys being with the truth. Your mind enjoys to be in the truth. Then, when once you digested the truth, once the truth has entered into your being, once the truth has worked its miracles on your being, the transformation expresses, that is what they call Nididhyasan. There are three words for meditation, listening the great truths, allowing the truths to work on you, expressing, allowing the truth to express itself in the life. These three are the part of meditation, according to the Eastern seers. Let us go to the next line. It's techniques. For techniques. What is actually meditation technique? You know these three, three are the part of the meditation. What is actually meditation technique? Whenever you understand the great truth consciously, intellectually, your conscious mind will be clear. But there are many things which is in your unconscious, which is in your subconscious, how to cleanse them. Most of us know that smoking is not good for the health. Many people say, I know that smoking is not good for health but I am not able to stop, I am not able to drop. A small story. One man came to me and said, Swamiji, I read, the, I read a book which says how much of trouble or how much of bad things we face if we continue smoking. What all the ill health will happen to us? How much we are disturbing the others? by smoking. I read all those things. Just a week ago, I read a book which says all the aspects of smoking. When you smoke, what you do for yourself, what you do for others. After reading this book, after reading that book, I stopped. I asked him, oh, you stopped smoking? Because I know that he is a chain smoker. You stopped smoking. He said, no Swamiji, reading like the books. He stopped reading the type of books. <laughs> <laughs> you see, whenever your intellect understands, your emotion doesn't understand. There are so many times, there are so many planes, your head understands. It is right, it is wrong. But your heart never understands. Your heart seems to be in fight with your head. So whenever your heart and the head is in fight, you need a technique to touch your heart. You need a method to touch your unconscious. You need your drill bit to go through, to penetrate your subconscious. The drill bit which can help you to penetrate your subconscious is what we call it as a technique, a method to work on your deeper layers. The man who has achieved the enlightenment, that is what we call in the East, your God consciousness, the ultimate, the man whose being has totally flowered, the man who has reached the peak of meditation, the man who continuously lives in the ecstasy, eternal bliss, those are the people give the methods or techniques to explore your unconsciousness, to penetrate your subconsciousness. They design systems, techniques, and they present it to the world. It's like a... When you scientists, when you work on the outer world, when you discover something, when you invent something, you make a research report, how you started your journey, how you went through, and finally where you landed. 
you present your research report. The same day, enlightened people, they start working in the inner world. Scientists work on the outer world. Spiritual people, they work on the inner world. When they start working on the inner world, how they started, how they traveled, where they landed, they present their report, their research report. When Krishna presented, it is called Gita. One thing is true, just like a science, science is very clear, logical. The facts and figures can be presented across the table, just like the science. Whether we believe it or not, whether we accept it or not, it is our trouble. But just like the science, the inner world can be presented. Inner world can be reached. Inner world can be penetrated by these techniques. When you use these techniques, you can be sure, just as you reach the things in the outer world by a proper road, if you take a proper road, you reach the goal. The same way, through these techniques, you can reach the experience of bliss, experience of joy, experience of the highest being, what Krishna says as a Brahman, or what Buddha says as a Sunyatva, or the eternal energy. It is very possible to reach the, the ultimate state it is very really possible to make your being flower, to make your being blossom into this very life, on this very earth. The methods to, methods which can make you blossom, what is, that is what we call as techniques. Or scientists and those think, those that think like scientists. Meditation is more necessary for scientists. Because scientists use all their energy in the level of intellect, one portion of their being. Man as such is a trio, is the trinity, I can even say the word trinity. Head, heart and the being. Head is an intellect. The system with which you do all the calculation, logical thinking, or all your thoughts are analyzed, all your data are processed, the portion with which you process all your data, all your information, all your intellectual knowledge. There is an next portion called emotion or your heart, your being, on which almost we don't work. All our problems, all our misunderstandings with the nature is nothing but the misunderstanding of your own heart. If the science would have taken a little bit of look or a little bit of work on the plane of heart, there will be there will not be so much of destruction, there will not be so much of violence, there will not be so much of terrorism on this planet. Whenever you become too strong only by the head, then naturally our whole being, our human tendency, our human in instinct to conquer others starts working. There are three strengths which is mentioned in the ancient texts. One is Buddhivala, the intellectual strength. Another one is Bahubala, the physical strength. The third is Atmavala. The strength of your being, strength of the self. If you have only the intellectual strength, you naturally try to conquer everybody. 
you naturally try to conquer the whole world. When you have only physical strength, you try to only act violently. You try to keep the people under your control physically. Man who has got only physical strength, he becomes a gunda, a rowdy, a criminal. Man who has got only intellectual strength, maybe he may not handle the people physically, but intellectually, in a cunning way, he will keep everybody under his palms, under his thumb, under his hand. A man who has got spiritual strength, or the strength of his self, you will see, he will never be beneath anybody, but he will have always the respect for every being. Whenever you understand your being, you come upon a great clarity and understanding that every being is just like you, unique. Not equal, but unique. Every self, every being is unique. You are not beneath somebody, but you are totally innocent. You are totally simple. You are totally alive. You are totally vibrant with the respect and energy. Whenever you get energy, you lose respect. Whenever you feel energetic, you always lose respect for the other being. But the energy of Atman, energy of the self is such you feel tremendous energy, you feel vibrant, alive, energetic, but you never feel like controlling the other man, you never feel like suppressing other man, you never feel like ruling the other person. That is what they call it Atma Bala, the strength of the Atman. Whenever a man becomes enlightened, he creates a tremendous wave of energy current of energy, it spreads throughout the world, but never through sword, never by bloodshed. It is always by love and compassion. So, the energy which can be understood by the being, energy which can be created by the being, if it can be created by the scientists, the people who work on the level of head, on the level of play, if they can come down a little bit to their other levels, other dimensions, heart and the being, you will see miracles on this planet Earth. We can propose miracles on this planet Earth. Accepting the other dimensions, heart and the being is the plan for the miracles to happen on this planet Earth. So, this is a few words I can share with you.